Outdoor Travel Channel with Robin Sherry. Well, hello guys, this is Rob from RV Talk Radio and today is an exciting day because I have Three Tails RV with us today and we're doing a live feed. And uh, it's kind of new for us, so please be patient with us. And if everything goes well, we should be able to see Aaron Jimerson. And, uh, and <laughs> hey, there I am too. So hi there, how are you? I'm doing good, how are you doing Rob? Pretty good, pretty Hello. good. I was looking forward to getting a live feed going with you. And uh, yeah, well, you have I'm some interesting to... things going on in your area and I want to ask you some questions about it. Okay. So uh, I want to kind of go slow here a little bit, give some people a little chance to hop on board and say hello. Now, Aaron's going to be watching our chat. So if you have any questions or statements or ideas or you like us to talk about, what's really neat about Aaron is he's in Washington State and I'm down in Arizona. So we always tease each other about the weather that we deal with. But the big thing going on up in your area <laughs> is that train derailment. Yeah, that happened just a couple of days ago. And unfortunately, there were... Uh... Three confirmed fatalities and over 100 injuries that went along with that. It's it's just truly kind of slowed everything down in the Seattle area, uh, blocking off traffic to I-5, and they're not estimated to clear that until probably Wednesday or Thursday evening. So do, do they have any lanes open at all, do you know? Uh, there's a lot of problems with uh, getting the, the traffic back and forth. Obviously, Amtrak is shut down. They have, I think, one lane open through that goes through that. They oh. had trains working through the night trying to uh, get all of the different cars cleared and taken care of. Yuck. So what's your what's your weather like up there with all that going on? Well, right now, let me hop onto my phone and I can give you the exact information. Um, it has been getting a lot colder here. Right now, it's 42 degrees, and the low tonight is supposed to be around 27, and I think the low throughout the week is going to be down to 28, with a high of 43, which is going to be tomorrow. Are you guys so, getting much uh, rain down there right now, up there? Well, right now, the sun's shining. It's it's actually not too bad with the 42 degrees, but it's going to get a lot cooler tonight. Yeah, so uh, my question, um, and I didn't have a chance to introduce you a little more, but uh, um, in fact, I have... A current picture on the screen right now of that accident. Oh my God, that's a mess. <laughs> I've driven under that bridge several times. <laughs> I think we all have going back and forth to to Portland. Yeah, so so I got you on the screen by yourself there. So I, uh, uh, um, Aaron is his channel is Three Tails RV. So he has a YouTube channel, does really good videos, and uh, you have Facebook, you have Twitter. And Twitter, Instagram, Instagram. Um, I'm all over the place. Yeah. We're trying to build a, a, a more audience. I think that's why Rob and I have sat down and talked and come up with this idea of doing some live chats because we want to share some of the information. He, he Now that he's down in Arizona and I've been in Washington State, we have a different perspective on the RV community, some of the RV travels. So that gives us uh, a wider range of uh, things to talk about. Definitely. Um, let's see here. Let me double check some of my screens here. I just, uh, we were, uh, using a new piece of software and, uh, it's throwing me a little, <laughs> it's not always like what we expect the first time. So I went back to our split screen. So, um, one of the things I wanted to bring up in a last, uh, live chat that I did with some folks for RV talk radio is, uh, what? Oh, switch it over to you. I don't switch it to me. I'm, Come on. You're, you're cuter than I am. Not so really. one of the things that they're, okay, I put it on me. Uh, so <laughs> one of my viewers, I uh, can't remember his name, uh, Sears. Uh, he uh, so was talking about wanting to venture, it, that there's no podcasts out there that are talking about boondocking or solar or van dwelling, really. They're all kind of commercially. And ours, uh, RV Talk Radio, we tend to uh, just talk about lifestyle. And you're kind of commenting that that might be uh, something you're one of your future endeavors, and that would be really awesome. Well, I've been talking with Lori about setting up a solar system on our new RV. 
for those that haven't been following along, we, we recently purchased a different RV. It's a 2000 bounder. It's a 34D. And I've been doing a lot of uh, different projects on it. And I film a lot of those projects and put them on YouTube so that we can <coughs> build an audience there and help out other RVs. That's the whole purpose of doing YouTube in my mind is to help out other people. Yeah. And anything from installations of the, the Max Air fans that we've put in to, I mean, I've even put in a um, dishwasher because Lori wanted one in, in, the, in the RV. So that's the type of content that I like to do is the DIY projects. I also do um, different uh, tip videos, uh, just stuff like that. One of the projects that I'm working on right now is a DIY macerator using a um, garbage disposal and a system to uh, haul the macerated poo to the dump station. And... Uh, that doesn't seem like a lot to uh, much to a lot of people, but when you're stationary, like we are right now, and we don't have the facilities to do that, we wanted to come up with a much better plan than what we were using in the past. Yeah, for those that haven't had a chance to have one of those tanks, first of all, don't buy too big a tank because you fill one of those uh, black tank uh, carriers. Those things are bit immensely bloody. heavy, and so that yeah. I remember you're saying it's getting really heavy. So. I thought it was really clever how you were doing that. So uh, you said you're going to be making a video about how you're doing the pump out? Yeah, I'm in the process right now of doing a DIY video on the macerator itself. Yeah. And then I'm going to show the 55-gallon the drum that we converted over to a dump system. And then hopefully right after that, we're going to put it, put it all together and combine it all and show how it actually works and uses yeah. So uh, did now I gotta ask you because uh, I know you put a dishwasher in your last rig. Did you put one in this rig? No, but it's in the plans. That's going to be something that's going to be happening in the near future. <laughs> Are you going to switch uh, out the stove too? We're actually talking about going to a what do they call those? Um, not a regular sto stove. We're going to get rid of the oven and then put in a. Oh my goodness! I can't believe I can't remember what it is. The. Um, well, hold on. I will go look, and I'll tell you exactly what it is. Yeah, because I'm not going to be any help because I hire people to do mine. <laughs> well. I, I, that's where I'm not cheap. Everything else I am. Well, what we're trying to do is conserve on the amount of propane that we're using. So what we came up with was to go ahead and use a true induction system that is on that we've seen on Amazon, and we're currently looking at it and trying to come up with the best option that we can for for doing that yeah cool so uh <laughs> now have you heard uh not train derailment have you heard anything about when they're going to have that open well like i said before it's probably going to be either wednesday or thursday before they can actually get everything clear i know last night they had live feeds of the different cranes that they were using to uh lift off the different um pieces of equipment I mean, we're talking about trains, we're talking about cars, we're talking about trucks. Uh, there was a semi that was hit, and all of the stuff that was in the back of that had been spread across I-5, so there's a lot of debris and a lot of uh, carnage that happened with that derailment. Yeah. So it, with that, in retrospect, it's going to take a lot of time for them to get it clear. So now, something else that Lori and I were talking about just yesterday, that's going to impact holiday travel because it's going to be slowing all the traffic coming in and out of Portland to Seattle and all the surrounding areas. And another fact that we were talking about was uh, Amazon for the delivery of packages is also going to be slowed down because yeah. got, there's a major facility, a major hub in, the, in this area up in Kent and in Seattle. And another distribution system is down in Portland. So all of that trying to get stuff coordinated between the, the, the points is going to slow down and that's going to delay hopefully it won't delay too much but it is probably going to be a delay on some of the christmas packages being shipped this year yeah now i i did hear something like down there by tacoma i do know there's a, a drive around kind of way to go it's like a 60 mile drive around but it's through yelm and stuff and i'm hearing that there's backups on some of those back roads as far as 15 miles long <laughs> just to try, for people trying to get around it but to put it in perspective, I am in Kent, Washington, which is in between, it's just like 15, 20 minutes north of of Seattle, or north. Excuse me. I'm south of Seattle, excuse me. 
<laughs> so what? How that impacted I five was that the backup went through Tacoma all the way down to where I'm at. So we're talking like 45 minutes to an hour on normal driving was backed up clear to Kent. And then, of course, the overflow has to go. For those that have never been to Washington, there's like three major ways of getting around in Seattle. You've got I-5, you've got um, 99, and then anything that connects the two in between. So if something major happens like this, it's going to put a big... Uh, standstill on all the traffic and all the patterns that and the movement throughout the city yeah. and the surrounding city. So that's something to keep in mind. And, and, and there's also uh, Interstate 90, but that goes completely the opposite direction. <laughs> you can't even use old Highway 99 because there's a stoplight every three miles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's terrible. So that <laughs> it just backs everything up and it's going to be a continuing problem until they can finally get that clear. Yeah. Wow. What a mess. So uh, what are the, uh, what's some of the main things you got going on in Three Tails RV in the next few months? Well, <laughs> right now we are still trying to get everything moved in, get organized in our RV. We had a 1988 Fleetwood Limited that we had before, and we ran into a bunch of problems post-selling. <laughs> uh, well, not post-selling, to try and sell it, period. Um, it actually took us about a month to get rid of that rig and get it, get this one to where it's at now. I'm actually parked in a residential area. A good friend of mine has this, a, a big enough space and a lot for an RV, but again, it doesn't come with, uh, it comes with the electrical, but it doesn't come with, with the sewer, and we do have the water with it, and we do have good internet. But that's why we came up with that other solution for transferring the the waste from here. Yeah. And for us, um, I think our biggest plans with RV Talk Radio is to get my episodes out. Sorry, folks. I've been, well, terrible. No, I've been I, trying to tell my listeners I've a little, t they, I've been explaining the new radio network. And so uh, it's had me really consumed. But I, sh I, I think I'll have an episode out this Monday. <laughs> so, uh, so it'd be what, the 23rd, I think? Yeah, somewhere 23rd, 24th, I'll have a RV Talk Radio out and get a show out. But then after that, uh, Sherry and I will be uh, uh, reuniting with our RV sometime in oh uh, January, February. And it should be interesting because I it's the first time I took the RV and, and winterized it. And I'm talking cold temperatures. It's like uh, five degrees where it's hanging out now. So if I messed up. I'm going to pay the consequences. So I'm hoping I didn't. So anyway, uh, what I want to do is kind of keep this short and sweet and uh, not uh, let this run too long. But I want to uh, do this in a more uh, when we have the opportunity. Uh, this was kind of uh, Aaron's and mine uh, warm up. <laughs> and uh, we're coordinating a couple of things, uh, some software and Skype at the same time. And it's new for both of us. And uh, we're having a little bit of a technical problem, but not too bad. So this, uh, this, we always urge people, if you've been thinking about doing videos, doing anything like this, Aaron and I both are just like, just dive in and do it. And you're going to make mistakes. Hopefully your listeners and people who watch you are forgiving, but understand how brave you're being. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to cut this short, Aaron. So I want to thank you very right. much. Um, Not a problem. We should be doing this uh, hopefully a lot more often. Again, Rob's in Arizona. I'm in Seattle, and we're doing it live. Yep. So, all right. Well, hey, take care and Merry Christmas to everybody. And we'll talk to you all later. Hey, thank you so much for listening and watching RV Talk Radio and Three Tales RV. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the world. It's been fun. See you next time, guys. <laughs>